Oke, okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sahron, for inviting me and allow me to uh, present uh, my slide uh, with a title, A Bridge in the Lands Below the Wine, Hamka's Role in Promoting Hibzalapal. Before going in detail to my uh, slide, I want to introduce myself. I'm Muhammad Abdul Aziz. I'm a registered as a PhD student in UCM and as well has a three year uh, experience of settlement in Madrasah Baru Ulu Melaka. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, my title is uh, discussing about uh, the role Hamka did uh, as a bridge uh, for Muslim in Southeast Asia. Uh, now, uh, now we are going to Islam in the lands below the wine. Yes, uh, the first question for sure, uh, maybe some, maybe of course you know, but some of you maybe uh, uh, still uh, do not know. Where is the land below the wine? So the term land below the wine, actually the term given by merchants of Arab at the time. Uh, this uh, region uh, referred to a region called Southeast Asia. Why is uh, called land below the wine? Because at the time, uh, the merchants of Arab Uh, want to reach uh, Nusantara region and uh, to reach this region uh, they use uh, the trade wine that blows from the mainland of Asia actually to Australia but in between between Australia and uh, mainland of Asia there is a region uh, called uh, here below the wine so from the uh, equator line uh, to the Uh, below. So that's why uh, our region, uh, Nusantara region called be, below the wine. So what happened uh, to Islam in this land, in the Malay world? So I want to uh, cite a report uh, in a book, Hikayat Raja Pasai, that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once said that after his death, there will be a region called, uh, this is uh, a dispute among scholars, uh, above the wine and below the wine. So this region is called Samudra. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called his companion uh, to uh, order his companion to call its people to embrace Islam because Uh, from this region, there will be friends of Allah. So, uh, this uh, statement actually uh, very relevant because uh, today uh, Islam in uh, Nusantara uh, become one of promising uh, region of Islam, other than other region for sure. Okay, uh, now uh, when we are discussing about uh, Uh, Nusantara, for sure, without neglecting other countries in this region, uh, there are two major countries, uh, which is Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, without neglecting other countries. So, uh, there is a historical confrontation between Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, actually, there are many, but I want to cite also uh, two. Uh, confrontation, political uh, political confrontation. At the time, President Sukarno uh, declared to its people to uh, sorry uh, to smash Malaysia. At the time, and the time in the year uh, 1963 uh, to 1966. Uh, this is aftermath of independence of Indonesia as well as Malaysia. For sure. Uh, Uh, if I was uh, alive at the time, uh, I didn't agree also uh, with the Sukarno's decree of this one. Uh, and the second is cultural confrontation. Uh, this emerged in the early 21st century. 
actually as I think very uh, slight but significant slight but significant influence from uh, this cultural confrontation at the time there is a, a self-claim uh, between people of Indonesia and Malaysia about a song Rasa Sayangi this owned by Indonesia this owned by Malaysia this right uh, this make uh, confrontation between its people so our task today is how to bridge uh, the hurt of the people of this region this is our our task as academician as intellectual as a muslim for sure so when we uh, talk about who has uh, devoted his effort to bridge uh, between muslim in indonesia and malaysia i want to say that hamka uh, is one of them hamka uh, in my slide, I want to advance my exploration how Hamka is very rigorous, is very uh, is very great in uh, promote uh, in promoting Hifzul Akar in protection of sound reason. Okay, so I want to define how Hamka promote uh, the protection of sound reason in two, two aspects, which is affirmation and rejection. Affirmation is uh, called min haithul wujud. And rejection uh, is called min haithul adam. This is the term in the concept of maqasid sharia. Affirmation min haithul wujud, I want to divide them uh, become uh, into two Hamka and the guided reason and the second is Hamka as a cosmopolitan Muslim and the second the rejection in Haithul Ada pure and honest admonition a gentle reminder to the Mufti of Job and the second is criticism Hamka's criticism against technical reason I want to uh, go in detail what uh, Hamka has done about his affirmation of reason. What uh, Hamka mean by the guided reason is that uh, Hamka wants to leave uh, our intellect and reason not only run, not only work, but uh, the intellect should also work and run in the boundaries and come straight by Allah. Uh, this uh, he called guided, not only reason, but the guided reason. In the term of Malay, we call akal yang berpedoman. This is very clear and mentioned throughout uh, in his work, uh, one of which is uh, Pelajaran Agama Islam. This is widely distributed in Malaysia, in Kelantan, uh, to Melaka. Uh, so, uh, this fact, uh, I want to go in detail in my paper all the facts about Hamka and how he promoted guided reason. All these facts tell us that even though Hamka was a critic against traditional Muslim, he still had the so-called guided reason. So he's very tolerant. Hamka only hated the fallacy, the failure, not the man of fallacy, not the man of failure. And the second, other than the guided reason, Hamka, how he bridged uh, between Muslim in South East Asia, uh, Hamka's ability as a cosmopolitan Muslim. So how Hamka become a cosmopolitan Muslim? Uh, this is very clear, very signal in the book owned by Dr. Seth Khairuddin al junet from National University of Singapore. He has a special book uh, about cosmopolitanism of Hamka. So, uh, be, why? Why Hamka called so? Because Hamka has uh, a broad mind. He's very open-minded. He has very fast reading. This makes him very tolerant. Even though, of course, he has his own principle, he has own stance, uh, but he's very tolerant at the time uh, when he 
uh, he is involved in Muhammadiyah, uh, which is used, uh, uh, which is not using uh, kunut. But at the time when he pray with. Uh, Uh, Kiai Haji Mahfud Siddiq as well as uh, Kiai Haji uh, Idam Khalid, he opt to uh, read kunut, even though actually he daily doesn't read kunut. Uh, but for honoring his uh, colleague, he uh, read kunut at the time, as well as uh, Kiai Haji Mahfud Siddiq at the time, when he become imam, and Hamka become Makmu, uh, Kiai Mahfud Siddiq uh, doesn't read uh, Kunut for honoring Hamka who is used to uh, not read Kunut. Yeah, this is the example how tolerant our uh, our scholars at the time. Uh, see this, uh, the aspect of affirmation of reason. And the second is uh, Hamka's rejection of reason. Just now, min haythul wujud, now min haythul ada. So I want to exemplify uh, this aspect with a letter he sent to Mufti of Johor. Mufti of Johor at the time, uh, in Malay, uh, we call uh, the letter Teguran Suci dan Jujur kepada Mufti Johor. Uh, written in 1958. Uh, so what made Hamka objective was the data used by the Mufti, which was far from the truth, far from the logical reason, from the guided reason at the time. The data also contradict the logical reason. However, contradicting the data the Mufti presented, Hamka at the time was very wise. He uh, didn't use... Uh, what fitna he, does, he didn't use word uh, tipu uh, he even though he criticized the mufti but he also honored the mufti uh, he used guided reason and then uh, criticism of hamka against stagnant reason uh, this is uh, the example of this aspect uh, we can find it in uh, most uh, his work, uh, his literature work. Uh, for sure, uh, you can see in Marantau Kedeli, Marantau Kedeli, Marantau Kedeli is actually not uh, merely a novel, but is a social uh, critic to the culture of Minangkabau at the time that tend to uh, embrace to material matrilineal line, as well as his other novel entitled Kapal Tenggelamnya Kapal Van der Weg at the time was written with the purpose of uh, criticism against post marriage and materialism that are for sure not in line with the values of Islam. So this is uh, two kinds of example. Uh, materialias uh, as the rejection uh, of Hamka about unguided reason. The first uh, promoting guided reason and the second is uh, reviewing uh, uh, unguided reason. All this contribution made by Hamka has made him become a bridge uh, what made him a bridge? Uh, because his value of wasatiyah. Here, in the discourse of Maqasid Sharia, there are five essentials, Khibdul Din, Khibdul Nafas, Khibdul Akal, Khibdul Mal, Khibdul Nasr. Actually, all is crystallization of the one important value of Islam, which is wasatiyah. Uh, so here I want to explore that Hamkas Wasatia has become a bridge uh, of Malay world Muslims. I, uh, I define uh, how his Wasatia has uh, contributed to become a bridge into three uh, in terms of religiosity and sociopolitics and culture. Uh, 
For sure, religiousity without mentioning uh, you all know uh, many many works of Hamka have been widely circulated both in Indonesia and even in Malaysia for sure. I think uh, Hamka is uh, more honored in Malaysia rather than Indonesia. Tafsir Al-Azhar, Teguran Suci, Pelajaran Agama Islam, Sejarah Umat Islam, or as well as his impressing sermons in the field of religion have been still enjoyed throughout Southeast Asian countries. His contribution in uh, academic uh, writings and uh, impressing uh, sermons has become a bridge uh, read by people in Brunei, people in Southern Thailand, in Indonesia, in Malaysia. So that's why Hamka, uh, even though he was born in Indonesia, but actually he belongs to people in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Brunei, and other countries. So in sociopolitics, uh, this yes, is uh, very key. Okay. That is good, yes, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Uh, the last is this one, uh, If my pen start writing on the paper, what crosses my mind? is Nusantara. This, so, this is cosmopolitanism of Hamka. I think it is enough. Uh, thank you for the time given by me. Uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.